Hi, I'm Brian Burkett. I'm going to review the topic central nervous system lymphoma. CNS lymphoma can be thought of in two categories, primary and secondary. Primary CNS lymphoma is an extranodal lymphoma presentation only in the central nervous system without systemic involvement. You can see the image on the top of the slide from a patient who presented with these brain masses without systemic involvement. This will usually be a diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. This makes up between 1 and 5% of brain tumors and is more common in the setting of immunodeficiency. The secondary CNS lymphoma will present with systemic involvement also. For example, the two images on the bottom of the slide show a case of secondary CNS lymphoma. On the left, we have a MIP from an FDG PET scan of the whole body showing numerous avid lymph nodes, and in addition, an FDG avid brain mass. This is more common with non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Some of the typical imaging features of primary CNS lymphoma include the location, often supratentorial, periventricular. These masses can cross midline and involve the corpus callosum, as with this example showing these enhancing masses in the brain. These tumors are densely cellular and therefore will be hyperattenuating on non-contrast CT and will restrict diffusion on diffusion weighted imaging, as we can see in these images. Typically, these tumors will be T1 iso to hypo intense, T2 iso to hypo intense, will homogeneously enhance, and can present as single or more commonly as multiple masses. Some less common imaging patterns include perivascular angiocentric lymphoma, as we see here in this example from the literature, leptomeningeal enhancement, or rim enhancing masses, as we see in this image on the right. That is more common in the severely immunocompromised and can be in the that can be seen in the setting of immunotherapy, such as with natalizumab. Secondary CNS lymphoma will have similar imaging features to primary CNS lymphoma. A third of cases will present with brain parenchymal lesions, and two thirds will present with leptomeningeal disease. This is an example from the literature of secondary CNS lymphoma showing parenchymal, ependymal, and leptomeningeal involvement. You can see in these additional images leptomeningeal involvement of the cerebellar folia and also involvement along the cranial nerves. Treatment for CNS lymphoma involves chemotherapy, including intrathecal chemotherapy, it may involve radiation and steroids. Lymphoma can respond dramatically to steroids, as we see in these images here showing a dramatic decrease in size of these enhancing masses over a one-month interval following steroid administration. Steroids prior to biopsy can actually hinder an accurate histologic diagnosis of lymphoma. Therefore, calling attention to the possibility of lymphoma in a differential diagnosis can be important prior to biopsy. Median progression free survival for CNS lymphoma is 12 months for high grade lymphoma. The differential diagnosis for entities with a similar imaging presentation includes glioblastoma, tumefactive demyelination, metastasis, and abscess, as we see in these examples of peripherally enhancing masses. In summary, CNS lymphoma can have a variety of imaging presentations mimicking other entities. Characteristic locations include periventricular location and corpus callosum involvement. Other characteristic features, including hyperattenuation on CT, restricted diffusion, and steroid responsiveness can suggest the diagnosis of lymphoma. Radiology can add value and affect patient management by suggesting a diagnosis prior to biopsy. And the main differential considerations include primary brain tumor, metastasis, demyelination, and abscess. Here are some great references for further reading if interested. Thank you very much.